Greetings everybody and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are doing good. Our favorite club has managed to secure all the three points at the Santiago Bernabeu in the crucial Champions League game, but we can say it was performance that lacked conviction from the Los Blancos. The joy of getting a win was obviously there, but we can say it wasn't a satisfying experience. Real Madrid as a team were not turned on. There were some whistles from the crowd as well, and you could understand why the crowd was edgy the entire night. It was about the disappointment of seeing an opposition team feeling comfortable in our very own backyard and definitely this isn't something that we were expecting yesterday. We expected Madrid to be much more dominant, our hopes were raised by the five-star performance away from home and we wanted something similar to that but against Shakhtar we didn't take the initiative in the game. We could have put much more pressure on the side from Ukraine but apart from a few phases where Real Madrid properly dominated the game, the performance left us longing for much more from the side. So in this video we'll do the post-match analysis of Real Madrid versus Shakhtar, we'll talk about the standout performance of the game and without further ado let's get started and having a look at the lineup there was Kothwa in goal in the back four we had Alaba, Melatao, Mendy and Dani Carvajal in the midfield we had Cruz, Casemiro and Motric and in attack we had Benzema, Vinicius and Lucas Vasquez and we'll skip the shout out section today because none of you got your scoreline prediction correct but talking about the team selection of Angelotti we all had the question of who was going to replace Rodrigo in the starting 11 Bale wasn't ready and Asensio and Hazard were the two options available but Carlo Angelotti chose to go with Lucas Vasquez and I could understand why the coach would do that. Seeing Hazard in the lineup was looking less probable because first if we wanted to accommodate Hazard in the lineup Angelotti surely would have had to switch formations. If Hazard plays he has to play on the left or through the center but making Hazard play on the right may not have been the most productive decision and about Asensio he had a much greater chance of starting because Angelotti has used him there in the few matches but we all know Angelotti has grown to see Asensio as more of an attacking midfielder and playing Asensio on the right isn't something that he fancied yesterday. So keeping all this in mind, Angelotti decided to go with Lucas Vasquez and there are reasons why sometimes coaches prefer to choose him over the rest. We know he's not the most talented, we know he's not the most skillful, he can make a few mistakes as well but what we definitely get from him is the work ethic. He will keep making those forward runs, he'll keep tracking back, the defensive contribution that he gives to the side gives him the edge over other players and as we know Hazard and Asensio are not the players who add a lot to the defensive side of the game. There was also the angle of putting someone on the wing that would try to penetrate through the wide areas which was explained by Angelotti. He said, I thought about starting Hazard today but because of the tactical reasons I prefer to play with a winger who could give more width than Hazard who prefers to go inside. That's why I selected Lucas Vasquez instead. But talking about the first half, as we had expected Shakhtar were going to have a much more defensive approach compared to the first leg and in the initial minutes we did see them deploy a much more conservative system. Have a look at this picture early on in the game Shakhtar tried to maintain a proper defensive structure. They had men coming back as the setup in the 4-4-2 but this initial phase of the game was also the time where Real Madrid were looking very positive. They were taking control of the game, the movement was looking good, the passing was crisp, Lucas Vasquez and Modric combined twice to create two excellent goal scoring opportunities. On both the occasions they had left Shakhtar defenders bewildered with their passing and movement. You'd expect Modric to bury those chances, the goals were there for the taking but credit to the Shakhtar keeper for making those important close range saves and also we can say that Modric didn't really have his shooting boots on. We could have had three goals in the first 20 minutes but the lack of clinicality meant that the chances went begging but that being said we were also excited about which player was going to score the thousandth goal for Real Madrid in the Champions League. It was an epic milestone especially when you see how far the rest of the teams are behind Madrid and most of us had suspected that it was going to be either Vinicius or Benzema. Both of them have been in hot form and were the front runners to score that iconic goal and as things turned out both of them were involved in the goal as well. It was a defensive disaster from Shakhtar, the keeper and the defender thought of tackling the press of Real Madrid playing out from the back but it turned out to be a counterproductive move. Vinicius Jr stole the ball from behind and laid it off for Benzema who had an open goal to shoot at and how fitting was it that Karim Benzema was the man to have that iconic moment. He further cements himself in the beautiful history of this great club and hopefully Karim Benzema will continue to reach even more milestones in the upcoming matches as well. But coming back to the game it was after the goal that Real Madrid took their foot off the gas, the desire and the tempo they were showing in the first 15-20 minutes faded away as the half progressed and that is where we provided an opening to Shakhtar Donetsk. Shakhtar just kept growing into the game as the minutes passed by and what we also saw was a change in approach from the coach. As we had discussed earlier Shakhtar were having a defensive mindset and they were trying to soak up the pressure but what the coach soon found out was that his team wasn't doing that very well. Even though they were sitting back they were not able to contain Madrid and were getting more and more susceptible to 
conceding. But after the goal, the manager threw away those tactics. He realized that his team thrives when they attack. They were much better going forward rather than playing a defensive game. And then we saw Shakhtar were much more adventurous. They were attempting to push men forward. They were attempting to take charge of proceedings. This was also the time where Real Madrid got a bit complacent. And soon enough, Shakhtar got the first goal as well. It was a ball over the top. Militao was caught napping. Alaba attempted to clear the danger. But the chested pass from Alan Patrick perfectly set up Fernando for the goal. And we did see that Shakhtar were the team having the upper hand towards the end of the first half. They were the team with momentum going into halftime. They were the ones who were pegging back Real Madrid. The Los Blancos were hoping the referee would blow the whistle soon enough. We are even Stevens at halftime. But more importantly for Real Madrid, they needed to find the mojo once again. Angelotti needed to get his team talk right. Because clearly they didn't have the control post the 20 minute mark. They had let the opposition take the upper hand. And Angelotti needed a few tactical changes as well. But unfortunately, Real Madrid could not regain the silky passing and agile movement post the halftime break. Things were not looking pretty at times. Both the teams displayed end-to-end -end stuff, but clearly the control that Real Madrid would have desired was missing in the game. We gave away the ball quite cheaply and I would like to highlight this piece of play from the 57th minute. Real Madrid again used the tactics of sitting deep without the ball. You could see the players were attempting to create that narrow block and here Real Madrid were inviting the pressure, but what was frustrating to see was that Real Madrid were not at all trying to press. The pressing from the front was non-existent and look at the reaction from Militao. He was also urging his teammates to go forward and at least try to win the ball. He was urging the attackers to press from the front but none of them were doing that and as the minutes were passing by Shakhtar were getting more and more comfortable. So I was not at all happy to see the entire thing panned out. I understand it's a tactic that Angelotti has applied but we need to bring more energy in the pressing. The players need to be more active attempting to win the ball. We need more aggression from the front line and that is something that we absolutely have to improve upon if we want to win silverware this season. But coming to the second goal, Real Madrid again got a goal through a beautiful piece of play. The build-up leading to the goal was of a very high level. The Los Blancos displayed some high-quality one-touch football. It was a mix of quick foot from Vinicius, a roulette from Casemiro to give the ball back to the Brazilian. Vinicius again comes up with the smart and selfless decision to lay off the ball for Benzema, and Benzema was never going to miss from there. The duo of Vinicius and Benzema is growing as the matches go by. The chemistry that they have been building is wonderful to see, and Real Madrid are reaping the fruits by getting the duo on the same wavelength. So those were the important happenings of the game. The goal that Real Madrid scored in the second half took away all the momentum Shakhtar were building. Post the second goal, Shakhtar were not able to cause Real Madrid much trouble. Angelotti shifted to the 3-5-2, attempting to bring much more defensive solidity. And thankfully, Madrid were able to hang on to the lead and secure a much-needed victory against the Ukrainian outfit. Moving on, let's hear what the coach had to say in the post-match press conference. The coach was first asked about the whistles that the Bernabeu crowd offered towards the end of the match. And Angelotti responded, I understand that. I know the atmosphere here very well. They demand a lot from us and it's good to motivate us. We started the game well, but then we were too little aggressive in defense. It's good that the supporters wake us up with whistles. It's nothing serious. Then Angelotti was asked if Hazard and Asensio would be angry since he didn't use them for a single minute in the game. And the coach said, I understand how a player who's been warming up for 40 minutes feels when they don't get on. Marcelo, who has won a few Champions League trophies, was warming up for 40 minutes and I'm sorry that he didn't get on. But today, I decided just to make two changes. And lastly, the coach was asked if there was too much dependency on Vinicius and Benzema for goals, but Angelotti, while answering, also went on to highlight the importance of other players in the side. He said, Everyone works hard in the team. Militao and Alaba have worked extremely well, and everyone knows what kind of quality there is in the midfield. Vinicius Jr., Benzema, and Kotua were outstanding, but Real Madrid is Real Madrid, and not just these three, even if they have done better than the others in this period. And that concludes the post match analysis of Real Madrid versus Shakhtar. We have placed ourselves at the top of the table with that victory, but do let me know what did you think about the performance of Real Madrid. What were the things that you noted? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you soon. Till then, take care. Glory to Madrid. And as always, a la Madrid.